friends, Karen Joseph here with Seven Networking. Welcome, welcome. Happy to be with everyone this evening. Well, it's evening for me. I don't know where you are in the world. Might be morning if you're in Australia, I guess. So I am Karen Joseph. I run a networking organization for entrepreneurs. And I am passionate about helping you guys to build your business to whatever level you desire. Hello, Jesse Bo Bessie. Welcome, welcome. How are you today? My daughter, I think I told you last time my daughter's name is Jesse. Troy Lynn, how are you? Web Designs your way. Evelyn, how are you doing this evening? Welcome, welcome. Per rules, desserts. Yummy, yummy. Sounds good. Sounds delicious. Where are you making those desserts? Tell us where you are. Hello, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for those hearts. I do appreciate them. Hey, hey, hey. Now is the time if you'd like to invite followers. We're going to discuss asking for the sale and closing the deal because I am passionate about helping entrepreneurs grow their business and I have found that it is often quite hard for entrepreneurs to ask for the sale. Do you guys agree with me? Gary Knapp, how are you doing? I just answered your email. That was so kind of you to send an email. I do appreciate it. And I am sorry that I am not following you. I don't know, but I will definitely be following you later. Um, let me flip this around. So we can start. For some reason, my scopes are not going to my Twitter. Every time I try to do it, it says there's a problem. So if you guys could um, share to Twitter, that would be most appreciated and also invite your followers as well because I'm sure that we all know people who could benefit from this topic about asking for the sale and closing the deal. Hello, the teeny tiny comedian. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. I don't think I've ever met you before. I'm Karen Joseph. I have two businesses at the moment. One is um, Seven Networking which is a networking organization for entrepreneurs. And then I started six years ago, just so you get to know me a little bit. And I recently launched a new business called Fab Right Now. I am super excited about that because it is all about promoting entrepreneurs. And that is who I am passionate about helping. So thank you, thank you for sharing, everyone. And thank you for inviting your followers now. Who here, if you're an entrepreneur, just type in, okay, since I'm still a newbie, how do I share to Twitter? Okay, great question. You see the little bald, I call him the little bald Perry guy? Press on him and then you either swipe up or swipe down depending on if you're on an Apple or if you are um, on an Android. Hello, happy hour with Sue. How are you doing, honey? Welcome, welcome. We're going to talk about closing the deal. I am super excited. So please do invite others and share on Twitter because for some reason my Periscope does not go to my Twitter anymore and I don't know why. I uninstalled it and I reinstalled it today but still to no avail. How are you, Sue? So let's talk about... Oh, you did it, Evelyn. See? You shared it on Twitter. There you go, honey. Fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous. Thank you. Yes. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about Periscope, I'm happy to answer um, as well. I have been on Periscope since about July. That's when I first joined. I first started um, broadcasting. I watched some people's scopes for about a week. Then I dove right in. I do love the platform. It is wonderful if you have a business. I would encourage you all to get out there and start doing your own scopes. It's a great way to meet people. You can take your, yes, you can, Miss Evelyn. You certainly can. So let's talk about the topic for today because I am so excited. Now, my scopes are very interactive. So I hope if you're on here, um, please interact, offer, you know, feedback, advice, opinions. That is what it's all about. It's all about learning from each other. Thank you for those hearts. I bet that, who is that? Is that my friend Gary? So yes, so when it comes right down to it, people that are in business like you and I, I find, oh, it's Sue, thank you, Sue, I find that it's often hard for people to ask for the sale, right? Wouldn't it be easy if we went somewhere and someone said, I'm selling windows today, how many do you want to buy, right? If you go to a window store, or I'm selling, like Evelyn's on here, she does web design, 
I sell, I design your website. We're, we're selling them today. Who needs a new website, right? Just to ask and people can either say yes or no. But in business, does that happen? Usually not. People are sometimes a little timid, afraid to ask, right? To ask for the sale. Why are people afraid to ask for the sale? What do you guys think? Why are we scared? Why, why can we not just say, I have windows. Do you want to buy some today? Or I have windows. How many do you want to buy? Why are people afraid? Why are entrepreneurs afraid? I think they're afraid of what the answer is going to be, right? We're like, oh no, what if someone rejects me? What if they say they don't want Windows today? What if they say, I'm not interested in a website? Well, you know what? That's okay too, right? The guy at the ball, potential clients, yes, they could be unresponsive. Exactly. Very true. So, we're going to talk about some ways to close the deal so you might want to take some notes hello ben you guys might want to take some notes because this is actually a topic we did at a seven networking meeting a while back and it has some great information in here and you might want to take some notes because these might be things that you want to try in your business all right so we're going to take a, a look at five ways to close the deal there's going to be five ways so you might want to jot them down all right you ready the first one is the assumptive close concept. You ask a question that when the customer answers it, implicitly commits the customer to the sale. Example, help me understand your process and how your company will purchase this product. All right. Best usage when you're not certain that the customer is convinced. Talking about the details will either confirm the customer's decision to buy or allow for further discussion. Be careful with this one though, because you know what could happen, right? It could be two-handed and the delivery of the person might think you're just being manipulative. So sometimes, you know what, sometimes these things work, sometimes they don't, right? If you have a business, you know it's all a learning process. The next one, number two, is called the reverse close. Hello, LaShonda, how are you today, honey? The reverse close. You ask a question that elicits a no response, but which is actually a yes to the close. Example, hey Candace, how are you? Candace, please share this. My Twitter's not working. I don't know why I can't get it shared. Yes, glad to see you on. And please do invite your followers as well. We're talking about ways to close the deal. We have lots of awesome business people on here today. Thank you for sharing, LaShonda. Thank you for inviting your followers. And thank you, thank you, Miss Candace. So the second one is the reverse close. You ask a question that elicits a no response, but which is actually a yes to the close. Here's the example, all right? Is there or any reason if we gave you the product today at this price, you wouldn't do business with our company? For instance, Candace sells wonderful paparazzi jewelry. There isn't, is there any reason if I gave you this necklace today for $5 that you wouldn't do business with me? All right? Just asking, right? What's the harm in that? You're asking. They can say yes. They can say no. So, that's right. Best usage for this. When a customer has a pessimistic personality that enjoys nitpicking and finding fault, remember to have a backup plan because you know what they might say. They might say, um, yes, which is why I'm not going to buy, right? They might say, yes, I have a reason. You know, I'm not going to buy that today. But that's okay. All right, that's okay. You know what? People can make up their mind if they want to do business with you, if they don't want to do business with you, if they want to do business today, and if they don't want to do business today. The thing is, is that people are often very afraid to ask for the sale, right? We get timid. We get shy. We're like, ah, oh, we can't do that. Think of the guy at the ballpark, right? He's selling the hot dogs. He walks around all day long. Hot dogs, hot dogs, hot dogs for sale, right? He, some people are going to buy them. Some people are not going to buy them. But he's not asking, you know, what your degree is of how hungry you are. Are you super hungry? Do you want a hot dog? Or are you a little bit hungry? Do you want to come get a hot dog later? No. Nope. He's just saying hot dogs, hot dogs for sale. Right? And that's it. True, right? You like that, Gary? Mm-hmm. Okay, number three, the time-sensitive close. 
concept. You attach the purchase to a timeline that the customer has already communicated. For instance, you said you want to get this done by tomorrow. Let's look at our calendars and figure out what we need to do today. All right? You said you want to get this done by tomorrow. Let's look at our calendars. Let's figure what we need to do today. All right? Gary, have you ever used any of these closers? I'm glad you like this info, Miss LaShonda. So, usage. When the customer has committed to achieving a specific goal within a specific time, this is also useful as an intermediate close in the next step, thereby laying the groundwork for a final. All right? You said you want to do this. Let's get it done tomorrow. Or you said you want to do this. Let's get this on the calendar for next week, right? If someone's showing interest, you do not want them to walk away, right? You want to get it on the calendar. Absolutely. The next one is my favorite. It is the direct question close. Being that I'm a New Yorker, right, living out here in Arizona, Candace knows we can be a little blunt as New Yorkers, right? We tend to just say it like it is. <laughs> Candace knows, right? So, you simply just ask for the business, all right? You just ask for the business. It looks like nothing wrong with that, right, Ellen? It, so, an example is, it looks like we've answered all the questions. Shall we meet, move forward with this, right? Evelyn does web design. It looks like we've answered all your questions. Shall we move forward with this? It's blunt. It's to the point. You're going to either get a yes, you're going to get a no. Gary builds apps. Oh, Gary, Evelyn's on here today. You guys, I did send an email back to both of you. I know you want to connect. So, Gary builds apps. I build these apps. You've shown an interest. Do you want to move forward with it? Answers yes, or the answers no, right? It's simple. It's to the point. Gary, you're getting hello from Miss Evelyn, right? If the answer's no, you might you might need to ask them. You might need to investigate a little bit and say, um, you know, find out why they're not ready to buy. That's you know that's it. All right. The number five is the direct statement close. You communicate your confidence that the purchase is going to happen by simply stating that it's going to happen. All right. You're confident that it's going to happen, and you just say, oh, I'm glad you like, right, and you just say, let's move forward on this, you know? Sometimes you have to just put it out there, right? You're kind of like telling them, you know what? You know they're interested. You know they want to do it. Okay, let's move forward with this, right? I can see that working for a lot of people in business. Sometimes just say it, being direct, right, Candice? What do you think? Let's move forward on this. You like the jewelry? Let's move forward on it. Use this when you've received multiple green lights, right? You have to get a good feeling from the people. Hello, Trish. How are you doing, honey? You have to get a really good feeling from the person that they're interested, that they want to do business with you. Because if you use it on a stranger, they're going to look at you like you're cuckoo crazy, right? You had to, you know, have the relation built with them, and then you're just exactly... <laughs> Lou, Lulu, right, so you're confident that it's going to happen, you've built the relationship with them, you know that they're all ready to buy, and it has an added benefit by positioning the purchase as an agreement between the two people, right, so you just say, okay, let's move forward, all right, has anyone ever tried any of these closers, or what kind of closers do you guys use, you may not want to deal with them sometimes, well, that's true, <laughs> then you might have other words that you can use and just say exactly that, you know, let's, I don't think we should move forward with this, right? Or maybe it's time, yes, right? There are other things that you could say, but if you want to close the deal, now we've spoken about closing the deals today. Let me ask you this. Has anyone ever had to part ways with a customer? Someone that you just could not work with. It just was not working out. It happens, right? Sometimes, you know, all the money in the world, yes, Evelyn says yes, could not want you to continue to work with that customer. And that's okay, too. Sometimes it's fine to say, you know what? 
here's your money back or wherever, whatever you want to do. It's time. You know, I don't think I can meet your expectations. I don't think I will ever be able to meet your expectations. So it's time for us to part ways. And that's fine. You know what? You can't push a boulder up a hill. You don't want to drive yourself. Good.